fulfilling. That your senior pastor is your protocol. <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father, for each soul here. Oh, Father, let every uh, ear be open. Let every heart be open to your word. Let every mind concentrate on your word today, Lord. And even as I stand here on this podium, oh, Father, it is your altar, oh, Father. We consecrate it, oh, Father, and we give it to you. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. I haven't seen you for the past three weeks. Now, Tafadali, go tear the person next to you. Tell them, Happy New Year. Good to see you, Moses. Good to see you, Gloria. Good to see you, worship team. Good to see you, media. Hope and Tracy. Good to see you, all the ministers. If I mentioned all of you, it would take a long time. But good to see our cameraman. You know, I have, I have to speak well of him, otherwise I might come out like this in the video. <laughs> Therefore, let us thank the Lord that we jumped into this year. As I remember Pastor Helen said, don't walk into the year. Jump into that year with power. Have you jumped into the year with power? Yes. Good. Today's message is very simple. Today's message is about rejoice. I didn't say joyce, I said rejoice. And as we start, I would like us to start with Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Give us 1 Thessalonians 5.16. It is a command. Rejoice always. Psalm 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, we have just come from a season of rejoicing. A season of rejoicing at the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were all happy. Some of us to go and mambuzi. And those guys who go to parties, they were partying. I remember back in the day when I was still a young man. Christmas, hey, that one week, from 24th to 31st, it was party. Eh? Going out, looking for friends. If you're not partying in your house, you're partying in your friend's place. If you don't have a friend to party with, you go around the estates and you'd find a party. Though that was in our days, eh? but nowadays things have changed. But we did not rejoice because of the birth of Jesus Christ. We rejoiced because it, it was Christmas. Thank you. It was a time we knew that everybody has a party or something to eat. So if you were hungry, you just walk into somebody's house and you would eat. That is how good it was those days, but not anymore. Now, what does it mean to rejoice? To rejoice means to be happy. To, be re to rejoice means to be glad. Just like this verse has said, be glad in that day. So to rejoice means to be glad or to have a great delight. In other words, it is a great feeling of happiness. There are many things to rejoice for. A new job. Some people, when they buy a position like a new car, they rejoice. A new house, they rejoice. You rejoice in friendships. You rejoice in family. In fact, when I talk about friendships, I like looking at women when they meet. They rejoice in each other. They talk. They laugh. You can actually see the joy when they meet each other. And that is part of rejoicing. Rejoicing when a newborn comes into the family. That one I can tell you the experience. I have four children. And each child was a joy. We rejoiced. And even the mother when she was carrying that child, yes, she used to get tired. But when that child was born, my God, my God, you could see the joy in the mother. When a daughter or a son 
brings somebody and tells the family, this is the person I want to get married to. We rejoice. And this will be a lot of joy. <laughs> Why are they looking at somebody there? <laughs> rejoice. We rejoice in the weddings and the marriages which take place. But now, sometimes relationships sour. Don't they do? Sometimes those jobs you, we, we rejoice for, they become tedious. Sometimes the money we made along the way has lost its value because we don't have joy in our lives. Sometimes that car which, hey, you looked at it and said, hey, this car, everybody in town will know who I am. It loses its meaning because there are things in your life which have stolen your joy. Therefore, the kind of joy I'm talking about, the kind of rejoicing I'm talking about is not the rejoicing that you get from physical things, from material things. It is a joy which comes from within us. It is much deeper than fecal joy of seeing things around you. But it's a joy which comes from deep within you. And that joy can only be brought by one person. By our God living in you. When we have joy in us, everything is fine. Even the bad things in life, you somehow get through them. They, it gives you the strength and the boost and the morale to go through those things. I'd like us to look at Isaiah 61, 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Now, in case you are asking, why should you rejoice? We have the answer right here. He has given us salvation. The garments of salvation. He has covered us with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments. Just listen to that. That is the kind of people that we are to our God. He values us. There is no bridegroom who just walks into church to get wedded. There's a long process. And when that bridegroom comes into church to get wedded, they come in their finest clothes, in their finest things. So you can imagine the kind of things that God himself has adorned us with. And also, we should rejoice because we have life. We have family. Not just our blood family, but you have family from the church. We are adopted by God. We are God's children. Therefore, any Christian within that fellowship is a child of God and we are one family. He has given us protection. He has given us healing. Every day we wake up. Do you thank God for it? Do you rejoice in that day that God has given you? Because there are many others who did not make it into that day that you woke up with. There are many others who woke up in hospital beds. But do you give joy that you are alive and give thanks to God? Uh, there is a special kind of people who I, I like seeing, I like watching. They fascinate me. This special kind of people, they laugh at everything around them. When they walk around, they are laughing. When they are coloring their books, they are laughing. When they are talking, they are happy. Who can, who can think of these people? Who knows who they are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish all Christians were like that. <laughs> okay, I will add. When you spank them, after 10 minutes they forget and they laugh. These are children. Yes? Children are almost always happy. Without reason, they are happy. I wish we as Christians, knowing the God that you have in us, could be happy like these children. After you spank them, they go outside there, they come back inside. They are laughing with you. Huh? And you have just spanked them. Huh? 
So I wish all Christians were like that. Life will spank you once in a while. Life might hit you hard, but keep smiling. Keep your joy. Rejoice in all the things that you go through. And I would also like to remind you through Romans 12, 15, that mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. It is a deep reminder that life is not always a straight line. Life is up and down. There are seasons in life. And these seasons sometimes bring rejoicing and sometimes they bring mourning. So it is very important to know as you rejoice that you should also mourn with those who mourn because one day your time might come to, to mourn. But the Bible also says, Mourning is but for a night. Rejoicing comes in the morning. Therefore, whatever troubles you go through, they are only for a time. Therefore, as you go through those troubles, as you go through those problems, rejoice because the Lord is with us. And also, the statement I just made that mourning is but for a night, and joy comes in the, in the morning is a statement of hope showing us that even though we go through troubles, they are only for a time. Therefore, there is hope for tomorrow. Another thing that God does not like is grumblers. That is why the Bible says rejoice. He does not like people who are quarrelsome, who complain. And we could see this by the example of the children of Israel as they went through the wilderness. The older generation which was grumbling, the older generation of complainers was all wiped out. And they did not see the promised land just because they did not have the joy of the Lord in them. Rejoice as you go through troubles. Yes, rejoice in your troubles. Although you don't have to rejoice for your troubles. Yes, because nobody wants troubles to come their way. But even in the midst of those troubles, rejoice. Romans 5, 3-4. Romans 5, 3-4. Thank you. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Verse 4. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. Therefore, even our tribulations, our sufferings, the things we go through, which are not good for us, which we see, we see as though they are not good for us, they have a purpose. They build perseverance. They build character. And they build hope. Therefore, as you go through these things, rejoice and go through them as though they are a passing cloud. They are helping you to do something in your life. They are helping you to build you. And not that a trouble is a problem. It has come to bring you down. No. Go through them knowing that, first of all, God is with you and that they are there to build you up. Now, I would like to give you the definition of rejoice in the Christian perspective. We say that rejoice is to be happy. To rejoice is to be glad. To rejoice is to have joy in you, right? But from a Christian's perspective, there is a slight difference. Rejoice in a Christian is being happy, being glad from deep within you, knowing that God is walking with you, God is taking care of you, God is watching over you, and your happiness is complete because of all these things. The rejoice of the world is just to be happy. But the rejoice of a Christian is knowing that God is walking with you through everything that you are going through.
Now I'd like to look at what happens when we rejoice. What happens when we rejoice? When we rejoice, our countenance is lifted. Our spirit is uplifted. And we become cheerful. Therefore, whatever is around you which is happening cannot keep you down. And when all these things happen in your body, it helps your body in certain ways. Happiness makes your heart healthier. Did you know that? Happiness gives your immune system a boost. Happiness helps you to fight disease and disabilities. Happiness also helps us to fight stress. Isn't our God a wonderful God? He already knew the medicine that our body needs. We need to rejoice. We need happiness. In fact, I remember when I was, uh, when I was a young boy, my father loved buying some magazines called uh, Reader's Digest. Who knows Reader's Digest here? Yes. I loved Reader's Digest. In fact, it was one of my stepping stones to English. And I think on the third or fourth page, there was a page called Laughter, the Best Medicines. The Best Medicine. And it was true stories of people. You know, maybe somebody walked into a restaurant and uh, banged into a a waiter and all, you know, things flew and he was reporting. It was very comical and funny, but they were true life stories. But it was actually the title which got me. Laughter, the best medicine. And as I was a young boy, I used to wonder, what is this medicine you can get from laughter? I did not know. Because me, I knew medicine, you go to the doctor, those days it required, you know, they inject you and uh, you come out laughing or crying. Yes, but you used to come out crying. <laughs> I didn't know that even laughter, rejoicing, cheerfulness is medicine for the soul. And God who is our creator, he already knew all this because he's the one who made us. He created our bodies. So he knew each organ needs this. He knew our thinking and he knew what is best for us. He is the master creator. And also, our bodies are science. The operation of our body is through science. But God is above science. He dwells in the supernatural. Therefore, he can overcome what science thinks. There are some diseases which people say somebody can be healed. But we have seen the lame walking. We have seen the blind seeing. We have seen those who are deaf hearing because our God is not just a God who is limited by science. He dwells in the supernatural. Point number two. When we rejoice, we get a positive outlook towards life and our problems. We get a positive outlook towards life and our problems. And this helps us in our daily life. Has any of you ever been jobless? Here. Yeah. You have. How is the feeling of being jobless? Not good, eh? I think we, are, we have all passed through that feeling. Maybe we had a job and we lost it. Or maybe we didn't have a job for a very long time. But... When God is in you, that joy of the Lord will help you go through all this stuff. Losing a spouse, losing somebody close to you, the normal problems of life, when they buffet you, but you have the joy of the Lord in you, it will push you through all these things. And also, it will help us in our mental, physical and spiritual growth. As you rejoice, your spirit grows stronger in the Lord because you know your source. You know the source of your joy. The source of your joy is not cars. It is not money. Neither is it houses. 
And most surprisingly, it is not people. It is not people. People will they'll disappoint you. They will let you down. They will drop you at one time or the other. Become sick and then you will know that people are very fickle. But the joy of the Lord lives in you and it helps you grow mentally, physically and spiritually. It keeps us from getting bitter. It keeps us from getting angry. You know sometimes some anger just comes within you. Eh? Sometimes even for no purpose just because the world is the way it is. Eh? But when you have the joy of the Lord you will always put these things at bay. An unforgiving spirit. There are those people who don't forgive at all. But the joy of the Lord will command you to forgive all those people. And guess what? Guess what? There's a resultant effect upon you when you have bitterness, when you have anger, when you have unforgiveness. It works against you, not even against the other person. But when you have the joy of the Lord in you, all these things will not work on you. And neither will they work on the other people because you'll be forgiving. You'll be, you'll not be bitter. You'll not be angry. And you will live a good life. Our joy can easily be taken away by something called worry. Who worries over here? We all worry. Yes. Thank you, Tracy. You are truthful. Very honest. <laughs> we all worry. Right? Isn't it true? Yes, be honest. We all worry. But the extent of your worry is the problem. Okay? A new situation might unfold right now. And something bad has happened. We are human beings. Right? We have emotions. If you did not worry, I would be worried for you. Yes. It would mean you're a stone or a tree or something that's not, that doesn't, doesn't have emotions. Right? When a bad situation comes, we worry. And then we think of how to deal with that situation. Therefore, that worry for that instant was good because it will give you answers. It will make your mind think. But, but there are those who worry a lot, who are always worried about this and that. And that steals their joy. And people who worry a lot do not look for the best of any situation. They look for the worst in every situation. And the problem with worry, it comes with baggages. It comes with baggage. Yes. It comes with sicknesses and diseases. Yes. Yes. It comes with high blood pressure. It comes with irritability. It comes with so many things attached to it. Ulcers. Oh, yes. Ulcers. Yeah. Well, in fact, uh, you have reminded me, there's a friend of mine, actually, I'm sorry, he passed away uh, back in the day where I was a very young man. I didn't know what answers was. Wow. And this man used to walk with a packet of Eno. Eh? And he used, to, he used to lick the Eno. And then he told me about answers. And those days we were still clubbing. Eh? <laughs> and our favorite place was a place called Visions. So there's one time we went to Visions and the DJ was our friend. Uh, <laughs> and we were having a good time. And suddenly this guy collapsed. Not till he collapsed at Yukachini. This guy collapsed Kabisa. He had to be rushed home with a taxi. He took his medicine. He became okay. But he became weak. And then he was taken to, to hospital. Uh, there was an Italian doctor team which had come to do some experimental uh, uh, operations on, on that. The guys who operated on all passed away. He refused. He went back home. He stayed for about five or six years and he passed away. That is when I knew that ulcers are a very bad thing. And when you worry, you are inviting all these things into your life. You are inviting ulcers. You are inviting high blood pressure. You are inviting irritability, bitterness, anger into your, into your life. But the joy of the Lord will remove all these things from your life. And also, there are those who are 
always pessimistic, low spirits. In fact, when they walk, you can know them, eh? They walk like this. No. Dunia imewapiga. Hey, the worries of this life. Hey, they're too much for them. That is one of the things that the joy of the Lord removes from you. Like the world is weighing on your shoulders. Like the world is fighting you and you alone. You are forgetting that everybody else has the problems that you are having. I know Pastor Helen likes saying, there's nothing new under the sun. Or the wheel cannot be, uh, cannot be invented. It has already been invented. So there's nothing new that anybody is going through. We have all gone through the same things. And as we rejoice, as we rejoice, all these things will become foreign into our lives. I would also like to, to add on to the pessimistic attitude. Huh? Have you heard of suicidal tendencies? People who have those tendencies. It is letting worry into your life. When you let worry into your life, it reaches a point that you lose hope. You feel hopeless. You feel like whatever you do, your situation will never ever change. And it leads to those kinds of tendencies. Therefore, let us pray that the joy of the Lord shall be in each and every person that we meet, our relatives, ourselves, because it will make the world a better place. Number three, when we rejoice, our hearts will find peace even in adverse circumstances. Our hearts will find peace even in adverse circumstances and will be contented with whatever we have. However great, however small, we shall be at peace going through our situations, going through what we are facing, whether we are poor, whether we are rich, our hearts shall be contented. We will not complain and grumble. You know, there are some people who say, hey, life has dealt me a bad hand. Eh? Who plays cards here? Yeah. Uh, Tracy plays cards. Eh? Oh, you guys play. <laughs> you know, when you deal cards, when you deal out cards, eh? the cards you receive are called a hand. Yes, that's a hand. And sometimes you receive very, very bad cards. Eh? If it is poker, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. these things can't even help me win. So you say, Aish, you have dealt me a bad hand. So when life deals you a bad hand, you shall not say it's a bad hand because you are rejoicing in yourself and you are saying, whatever life has given me, I will deal with it. I will deal with it because I know that God walks in me and works in me. Therefore, in everything, I rejoice. Uh, there are a few kinds of people I have met along the way in my life. Eh? They're always smiling. They're always smiling. No, 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 apart from children. <laughs> children are perpetual smilers. <laughs> Those ones are always smiling. Aha! Thank you. We have a very good example. She is always smiling. And you know, that is the example I wanted to give. <laughs> and they always wear a smile on their faces. Eh? Even when they are going through funny things, bad things, they don't tell you. Even when they tell you, they tell you cheerfully. <laughs> So you wonder, hey, were these people created differently from me? Or is it that there's something they are seeing that I am not seeing? But there's a certain joy which will make you cheerful all through that you are going. And I hope that Deacon Joyce has that joy in her from our living God that will push her through everything that she's going through. Point number four.
when we rejoice, certain spiritual, emotional, and even physical chains are broken. Certain spiritual, emotional, and even physical chains are broken. Who knows the story of Paul and Silas in prison? Uh -huh. Paul and Silas were imprisoned. They were imprisoned for something they did. And it wasn't a bad thing. Normally people are imprisoned for the bad things that you do. But Paul and Silas were imprisoned for doing a very good thing. They cast out a demon from a certain young girl. And the owners of that girl were so angry, they had them thrown in prison under false pretenses. Now, I would like us to fast forward from that time to this time we are in right now. If you are accused of anything that you have not done, first thing, lawyer. Even if you are accused of something that you have done, first thing, lawyer. lawyer. And then, social media. These people, where are they, eh? you know, eh? Twitter, you know, eh? all these things, eh? going around. Yes? And you would be bitter. You would argue. Eh? Especially when you are in the right. But these two guys, they were brought before uh, all that panel and then they were thrown in. And you would expect them to be bitter. You would expect them to be especially angry. We were doing a good thing and yet you were thrown in prison. But these guys did not. They worshipped. They praised. They sang. And they were not singing just at a, you know, that small voice. They were singing with gladness. They were singing with joy. They were singing to Almighty God. I am sure that the guys who were there must have been wondering, what kind of men are these? They're in prison and they are singing and they are worshipping God. Therefore, they must have had, had the urge. I don't know. But maybe they had the urge to know who this God was. Why were these men like this in this situation? And they sang until their shackles fell off. Amen. The doors opened. Therefore, when you have joy in you, it breaks certain things in your life. It breaks certain chains and shackles. It frees you from certain things. And as these men, as the, okay, as the doors opened, and the keeper of the prison came and found doors open. He wanted to commit suicide. You see that worry, eh? yeah, He was a warrior. <laughs> you see what worry does to you? He wanted to kill himself. And then Paul and Silas came and told him, hey, sir, eh? no man is lost. Eh? We are all here. No man has run away. We are all here. So take it easy and relax. And indeed, the man relaxed. He even came to salvation. Him and all his household. And guess what? They rejoiced. So, you see, where God is, there is joy. If he lives in your heart, you will rejoice through everything that you go through. Through all that life throws at you. When you rejoice with that living God in your heart, you will be able to sustain and go through all these things. Um, Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your burdens unto the Lord and he will sustain you. I didn't give it to Tracy because it was just a... Cast your burdens unto the Lord and he will sustain you. And Jesus himself said, who remembers what Jesus said about burdens? Uh -huh. All ye who are weary and heavy laden. Yes. 
come to him, he will give you rest. Because his burdens are light and his yoke is easy. Therefore, we are seeing that burdens do not belong to us. Yes, they might come to us, but there's somebody who carries our burdens for us. And that is Jesus. Give your burdens to Jesus. Let God help you through all the things that you are going through. But unfortunately, most of us want to help Jesus to carry our burdens. You're telling Jesus, you take hold of that side. I will take hold of this side. Let's walk together. Yes. But we are supposed to cast our burdens unto Jesus. Unless you cast your burdens completely, freely, and wholly unto Jesus, you will never know true joy in your spirit. You will never know true joy. Therefore, if you cast your burdens unto Jesus, why should you not be joyful? Why should you not rejoice at each and every turn? Even whatever the, the world brings at you, you will rejoice. You might not be laughing and laughing. and eh, you know When you laugh too much on your own, people will think you're mad. You know? <laughs> people will think you're mad. But there's a joy in you that cannot be kept down because God lives in you and you have given him your burdens. Therefore, as I close, physical chains were broken through rejoicing and through worship. You cannot worship the Lord with burdens in your heart. You cannot truly worship him because the Bible says God should be our focus. In everything we do, God is our focus. Therefore, when you go to worship God, you go to worship him and him alone with all your being, with everything in your heart. Just like Jesus said, love the, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might. When you worship him, worship him the same way in truth and in spirit. But if you have burdens you are carrying, to go and worship God, those burdens will keep you from truly worshiping God because you'll be focusing partly on your burdens and partly on God. Therefore, you will not truly worship God. Paul and Silas truly worshiped God. They truly go, go, gave God all the glory. And you could see this in the results. There was an earthquake. The gates sprang open and their chains and shackles fell off. Therefore, give your burdens to God. Worship him in truth and in spirit and see what he will do for you. Rejoicing releases us from spiritual chains of bitterness, anger, emotional stress, self-pity. Do you know that self-pity is also a spirit? And it can stop you from doing so many things. So rejoicing releases you from all these things. All these problems which, and which are associated with a, with a lack of joy. With joy in you, it is impossible to be angry. It is impossible to envy others because you'll be joyful. When your friend takes a good step, you will applaud them and say, ah, that is good. And you will clap for them. But when you do not have joy in you, you will envy them and you'll be jealous of them. And as I close, I'd like us to sing a small song. Hmm? A small song. <laughs> hmm. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Were you blessed? Yes. To God be the glory. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you.